So hi, everyone. And I'm going to start right now. It's really wonderful to be here. So do you know that only about a quarter of STEM workers, that is 28%, consists of women, as opposed to 72% of men? When I talk about STEM workers, I mean engineers, scientists, architects, mathematicians, and etc. And when I talk about the society or mindset, it is very understood that only males dominate in such fields. I'm sure you all here might agree with it. But I stand apart and I disagree with this. We are living in the 21st century where we talk about equipping our children with the six C's. Then why, why in this age and day, we have not been able to achieve gender balance, gender equality? Hi everyone, I'm Namya Joshi, a proud Indian girl. And I have spent the last four years designing and delivering free of cost coding workshops for more than 10,000 teachers young people, especially girls in India and all over the world, as well as empowering other young people to run their own coding clubs. I've also raised awareness about the social issues using game-based learning with STEM. So, you know, my parents are from the field of IT. And if I go by people's perception, it is quite obvious that I will pursue the same field because it is genetic. But you know, my purpose has always been very, very clear. So why do we see very less girls in this field? You'll always see boys dominating this field of computer sciences and field of IT. We always hear a Rajesh, a Aditya, a Mohan, but we hear very less Divyas, Diyas, Rajnis, and Namya. Why does this not sound good? Well, let me share my journey with you. It all started four years ago during an unplanned interaction with my teacher. And I had uh, got glued to a game called Minecraft. I had heard that this game is used for gaming, but soon I realized that it can be used for education as well. I'd seen Minecraft installed on my mother's laptop. So I started trying it on my own. And after understanding the basics, I watched some tutorials and got myself familiar with it. Though I failed getting help from the teachers. So I decided to take it from myself because, you know, um, it has changed the way of my thinking. So I took it forward by myself because I, th I thought that it can become beneficial for other people as well. And that's when I made my first lesson on the Egyptian civilization. That is a history lesson. And the lesson was a great success. Both the teachers and students were happy with the outcomes. The teachers observed that the students were more engaged with self-paced learning since you know, they could revisit the concepts they didn't understand before and perform the evaluation in a non-threatening environment. And keeping in mind that the vision has empowered me, I considered training peers and teachers. So I began uh, educating teachers and students, not just at my school, but also in my region, country, and other countries around the world, employing game-based learning in the classroom, as well as generating course materials in Minecraft. And there I was diving right in and was given an opportunity to conduct and lead a workshop in Finland for a Christmas project and uh, was recognized for creating a jingle in Minecraft. And boys in my immediate vicinity were in cross in multiplayer, having been hooked for a number of hours on another gaming platform. And I felt amazed and pleased with myself. And this helped me acquire more confidence and pursue my passion, even after we mocked because I was a girl. But somewhere deep down in my heart, I did feel bad about it, but I never gave up. I took it as a challenge. And if you master the challenge, you surely win an opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the beauty of the human mind is that it enjoys playing games our minds are wired in such a way that we are just automatically drawn to the games and that's when i began educating instructors all around the world how to use this game based learning in the classroom and create course material in minecraft so if i share an experience i was teaching the kindergarten teachers of uh, finland how to use minecraft to make their lessons more engaging over skype and i always used to imagine that what would happen if i taught them right there physically in finland the universe does carry out your plans and well this was a new beginning in and of itself when i had the opportunity to meet teaching various university professors educators and specialists it was truly you know a once in a lifetime opportunity for me and the finnish teachers were astounded that a 12 year old indian kid from a small town could stand on a stage and train professionals and university professors on november 16 2019 i was the star of the day on this event i had never dreamed in my wildest fantasies that i would journey alone to santa's land and deliver a workshop and then return with wonderful vibes from that location those who don't believe in magic will never find it and when i was returning from finland i was informed that i had been invited to meet the president of microsoft india mr anant maheshwari it seemed as though i had just landed on the event stage my legs trembled and i was suffering from jet lag during the tete session and when i told him that i wanted to work at microsoft he was ecstatic and burst out laughing people were asking me to take selfies with them and i truly felt like a celebrity and you know i enjoyed this feeling of being felt important in those moments since i had never felt that way before so you see dreams come true only when you believe in them and meeting mr satya nadella the ceo of microsoft a man with exceptional leadership and delivery skills was one such dream i felt like i was on cloud 9 or let's just say on top of the universe when i met him and my joy knew new bounds i was also delighted to know that he has recognized me at various events for creating minecraft course materials and teaching teachers during his tour to india in february 2020 and just in the same way my journey with stem continued more like minded people started joining and enriching my life but you know by that time the covid 19 outbreak had begun we were all scared when we heard about the mass deaths and devastation the entire world was put on lockdown and on march 22 2020 the entire country of india was put on lockdown though we all appreciated the relaxing rhythm of having no routine for for several days but i'm sure we've all been through tough times whether you run the day or the day runs you the choice is yours and as i was walking to school i decided to stick to my routine and my personal life did not come to any end to have a happy life we must confront and transform our abnormal lives into regular ones which i accomplish by keeping myself busy but in a productive way so i made a schedule that i followed religiously and thoroughly enjoyed it i developed numerous timetables and adorned those papers to make it more unique and not monotonous so if i share my routine it was just like um, getting up early at 5:30 am in the morning with sahaj yoga and exercise as it is critical to produce the happy hormones and in the middle of these turbulent times i've been making the most of my time and this was exactly the time when i utilized to learn myself programming graphic designing website designing and playing piano and it was very important to revise these concepts for me and that's when i started collaborating virtually with teachers 
and students on Twitter and LinkedIn to take free classes for them for these applications. And I could not believe that I was able to train more than 1,000 teachers and students in just four months. And I posted tutorials every day for these students and teachers. This helped me to enhance my editing and presentation skills. Somewhere deep inside, um, I felt compelled to form my own club, specifically for girls. This lockdown gave me strength and the skills I learned paved the way for me to start the hashtag girls in STEM club. And uh, when my friends and students, educators from other schools across the world and India tagged me on Twitter and LinkedIn after completing a task or earning an award, I was very overjoyed because that was the perfect example of my credo, each one teach 10. So I defied all odds during this pandemic and to promote education during the troubled times of this COVID-19 induced lockdown. Collaborating with 98 countries, I created a virtual library of lessons, more than 200, which are available free of cost on my YouTube channel, Technocrat NJ, and on my website, namiajoshi.com. This entire was indeed motivational for me. I had conducted more than 100 workshops and helped educators to create more remote learning tutorials. I also participated in 47 competitions and thus empowering and motivating the team students and also provided 97 talks on various platforms to close the gender gap in STEM and empower girls to learn the ICT skills. Wherein empowered and inspired by my own motto, each one teach 10. Till date, I'm able to mentor and train more than 10,000 teachers and students out of which 1510 girls, 3350 educators, and 4960 students in my region, country, and across the world to create game-based lessons to be used in the classrooms. Every action we take impacts the lives of others around us. The question is, are you aware of your impact? Well, for my ongoing efforts of creating and empowering others, I was honored with the Rashtra, Pradhan Mantri Rashtra Bal Puraskar, India's highest civilian award for an individual under the age of 18 years old. So let me share the story behind this. Well, my mother received a message to be added to a WhatsApp group on 24th of January, and that will be the day I will never forget. So my mother asked that, who's this? And asked if this was the finalist. And then later she went to her workplace and I had my online classes. I turned on my laptop to make my daily to-do list and you would not believe. My eyes were opened wide when I received an email from the prime minister's office informing that I had been selected as one of the 32 awardees from across India. And that's how I met our worthy Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, and his words, Punjab's daughter, Namya Joshi, still echoes in my ears. The tweet from his personal account congratulating me as the Dhyana's gamer, Namya Joshi, again proved there is no girl or boy gamer. A gamer is just a gamer. Winning the Bal Puraskar Award has shown me the road to continue working in the advocacy of STEM. And as a result, on November 14th, 2020, I launched the STEM podcast, Each One Teach 10, An Amazing World of STEM. This podcast reinforced my conviction that STEM can be brought into all classrooms and homes, regardless of the subject or grade level being taught. And guess how wonderful that is that one student teacher are discussing and reaching out to students and educators all over the world to spread that STEM can help educators to provide opportunities for their kids to study and take care 
of their own learning. Before I knew it, a year had already passed and 34 episodes of my podcast are done. The Diana Award and the Global Child Prodigy Award, a validation of my efforts and they encouraged me to continue on my path. Gratitude is the sweetest blossom which springs from the soul. I want to give back to the society whatever I have received. I'm a social entrepreneur with my own line of merchandise and the proceeds from this merchandise are contributed to an NGO that takes care for animals. Being believer of the adage, stay true to yourself, it is always open to learn, work hard and never give up your dreams, even if nobody else believes. My experiences are chronicled in my book Hashtag each one teach 10, the journey continues. This book will be out in a few days. And I'm not just curious about IT. I just turned 15 the last month and I have many more interests and passions. I'm a basketball player, a swimmer, a yoga practitioner, and I love sketching, uh, singing, dancing, and playing piano. Also spending time with pets and my family. I enjoy each and every moment of my life and give equal time for everything. So I wish that my purpose has opened your minds and given you a picture, a wider picture, that girls can do more. They deserve equal opportunities. They learn more, can so greater heights, and they should never be looked down upon. I would just like to end by saying that age or gender is not a barrier to change the world. When we inspire girls to pursue courage in STEM, we break through the ceiling. I was inspired by an incident. Who knows, the next person out of few listening to me might be here. 